Now, I've been saying this for years. They're not theories, they're not ideas. These are facts, and they're self-evident facts. And you go through the motions that I go through, and you'll feel exactly the things that I'm talking about. Because the way golf is taught, everybody thinks it's a, a difficult game, and it's not. Golf cannot be as hard as they make it. You can do anything you want with that golf ball, with the flight of that golf ball, and it isn't hard. Best training aid we can have. It taught them so much time, as easy as anybody I ever saw. You do that over and over and over and over. That's pretty easy, everybody can do that. But you can't do it tight, it has to be free. The way Melhorn drew the ball, he said, I let the club turn in my fingers, but he would allow the club to turn. He would slow everything down a little bit. Face of this golf club moves 180 degrees. It does that by itself, and you have to go with that. You can't block that action. You have to go with it, and the grass whip teaches you to go with it. It makes you go with it. Good morning, Bobby Shave is my name. I'm a PGA professional. Um, and we are here uh, at the uh, University of Florida Turf Grass Station in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm going to host the video this morning. And uh, we were here last time when we did a video, Golf Secrets Exposed, explaining uh, Mr. Melhorn's book. And uh, they do terrific work here. Dr. Cesar and his staff doing uh, research on southern turf grasses and we have we're neighboring our area this morning because we have a group uh, starting a project right here next door so um, what I'd like to do first is uh, talk to you about Melhorn a little bit while Bill was uh, according to Hogan and armor was the finest striker of the ball they ever saw he played in the 20s he was leading money winner three of the 10 years that he played. He was a, a horrendous putter. Um, and even so, he could win because he hit the ball so well. He would go for a month and never miss those 25 yard fairways. Um, and I was lucky enough to uh, meet Bill back in the early 60s. And he was a friend of my dad and my grandfather and he wanted to meet a uh, third generation shave. So we, st we struck up a friendship, and it's lasted until his death in 1989. In the meantime, he had a terrific body of knowledge that I wanted to save for posterity. So I sat him down for 15 hours and taped him question and answers. And I put it into a book form, added a bunch of pictures, and this Golf Secrets Exposed is the result. And included in the book, uh, we have a two-hour presentation of what we call Melhorn Live. I taped him doing two seminars to college students in the middle 70s. I was a golf coach at uh, Florida International University for 17 years, and Bill was with me every day. And so I learned a great deal from Bill. Bill was fairly closed-mouthed about uh, how things were done. Uh, movement wise uh, but over a period of time I kind of dug it out and so what you're going to hear this morning is a result of that and the things that you will hear you already know they're not theories they're not ideas these are facts and they're self-evident facts and you go through the motions that I go through and you'll feel exactly the things that I'm talking about and they will become your ideas. And you will be able to teach them to yourself, to your friends and family. And uh, I want to reach the entire golf community because the way golf is taught, everybody thinks it's a, a difficult game. And it's not. And I'll read you uh, a few things that Melhorn had to say about, uh, about the grass whip and which is what we're going to talk about this morning and this is on page 61 and 62 and I start out by saying 
What are some of the exercises that you use to gain timing between your arms and legs? Bill said, very, very simple. You learn to take the golf club and you cut grass for the distance that you're going to move that ball. But walk, walk forward, not sideways, but forward. Now be sure to cut grass in both directions, not just one. That doesn't mean you're going to take a divot. It doesn't mean you're going to hit down on it, but you're going to cut grass. Now I've been saying this for years. In fact, I started to write a book on this. And most of the book was on cutting grass with a grass wick, not on golf. And he also goes on to say, well, you can believe it or not, uh, true temper finally came out with what they call the golfer's grass whip, stealing some of my thunder. They put it, a regular golf shaft and a golf grip on it, where most of the grass whips have a small steel rod that goes to the blade and a wooden handle. And I said, I had one of those exact grass whips when I was a kid. I used it a lot because I thought it was good physical exercise for golf. I didn't know I was helping my golf swing. And he said, believe it or not, they came out with this and it sold for $5 and you could get them in any drugstore. Every one of my pupils bought one and they said, I don't need you anymore. It taught them so much timing, no matter how they swung at the golf ball, they got good results. And he goes on to stay. Uh, I'm still going to say this, and I'm always going to say this, golf cannot be as hard as they make it. Sure, it may be if you try to play certain types of shots, because you can be do anything you want with that golf ball. You can do anything you want with the flight of that golf ball, and it isn't hard. Because I've had people, the worst kind of duffer, that couldn't shoot 100 and have real, real bad swings, learn to do a lot of tricks with that golf ball. Everyone has got muscular control. And Bill believed in the grass whip 100%. It's the best training aid we can have because the golf swing is nothing but the grass whip swing. And you train yourself with a grass whip and you simply hit the golf ball with your grass whip swing. And I'm gonna demonstrate that right now.